Hello and welcome back to, I think this is episode five of the Die With Me series. My name is Brianna and I am the dyer behind the Little Wolf Knits. And if you are here today, you probably know what's up unless you stumbled upon me by accident. In which case, go back to, well, pop them over here. Uh, the last Die With Me videos where I basically take you through the entire process of creating a new colorway in my shop where I dye hand dyed yarn. It has been a minute and I'm so sorry. There's been a lot of stuff going on on my end and I have not filmed a podcast, but I'm hoping to do so soon and fill you in on where I've been. Long story short, we bought a house and got engaged and so much is happening, but I'm very happy and excited to be back with you in my dye studio. Dye studio, you say? Yes, dye studio. I know, it looks like my, my garage because it is my garage, but on this side is a little bitty dye studio coming together. This is actually my first time doing a full dye day, full dye day, and by full dye day, I mean like pants. Like I haven't done a tray yet. I literally just did a tonal to make sure that the outlets worked. So I'm doing a few trays today. I'm super excited, and I figured it would be a perfect time to take you along in the creation of a new colorway in my new studio. What new colorway is it? If y'all remember, the last episode I did was geyser number one. Why geyser number one? Because I had a whole set of geysers from Yellowstone National Park that I could not choose between and decided I would just do all of them, which is also perfect timing because I will be in Montana this coming weekend. Um, for one of my very dear friends weddings. So the timing is perfect. I'm super excited um, So I'm going to show you the photo and inspiration for geyser number two and let you know what I'm thinking Okay, so here we have the inspiration photo for geyser number two. I am obsessed obsessed with this inspiration photo and it's not too far off from the first photo. The first photo really included a lot of those sandy, beige, oranges, some blue speckles to represent the water, and we have a similar scene here. Again, Yellowstone National Park, another geyser. But this one has really shifted my focus of what stands out to me in this photo. So the first thing I see is the pool of water right at the front. Those like that deep steely blue and then that almost icy blue oh, it's so beautiful even with those a little bit you can see right on the right half of the geyser those green undertones are definitely there so that stands out first and foremost but then the back half of the photo you see the oxidation of I don't, maybe water it looks like that was running down almost like a salty sort of cliff or rock and those golds, yellows, honeys just stand out to me. And I love, I love that the all of this is happening on a really, really bare base, right? It's that pretty natural stone. So I'm thinking for this one, I'm actually going to leave the base pretty bare um, and pull in those two shades of blues, a darker steely blue, that icy blue with the green undertones, and then come in with a gold and a, and a honey, not quite yellow, it's almost a little bit orange. Um, and thinking about speckles, maybe with some of that orange rusty color and some green to pull in the trees in the background and the grass right off to the in the middle of the photo but if you know me you know that speckles wait until the rest of the colorway is dyed so for now I'm going to go ahead and mix up some colors and see what we can't come up with okay I just mix up my colors they are exactly exactly what I wanted and I'm so happy I have the I have overhead lights on right now because there's only one little window in here and it's late and it's dark out um, so the color might not show up so great, but it's so good. So I'm hoping you'll be able to see it. 
So, okay, you can see it well enough. This is so good. So we got this dark steel navy, this soft icy blue. You definitely see the green undertones coming through. This gold and then this honey color. I'm keeping it light with just these four colors because like I said, if there's that natural undyed base that comes through, that'll be beautiful. And I'm going to have some yarn speckled on top. Before I started to paint, I wanted to show y'all a little bit more about the setup. So I have a bunch of different um, outlets here. So I'm able to set up a few different things at one time. Here you have um, one of my no waste, one of a kind sock blanks. So that's what it looks like when I'm working on it. It's on a burner there that I will turn on right after I do this pan. Um, and I have these double burners by Elite Gourmet. Um, I found them on Amazon, Walmart. I did some review checking and they seem to be working well so far. The only thing is they pull a lot of electric, but that is the case for most electric hot plates. So I'm just going to turn that up to a, a two and a half, three. And I have my yarn that's been soaked in citric acid in my pan here. Um, I'm actually dyeing up a few different bases because I like to see that for tester colorways like this. So I have my sunfish base, which is my 7525 fingering, a 420, which is my light DK, and then my singles base, my lasers base, um, which is a single ply fingering weight yarn. I'm going to paint this color on. I'm so excited about this, like so excited. I'm thinking it's gonna be really great. I just put the lid back on. Um, it was getting a little bit hot, so I put it back to two. I'm still figuring out this whole system until a better one arrives, which means the next dye video, you might see something very, very exciting. A steam cabinet. Um, maybe, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully by the next video. But I just threw the lid on this and I'm going to let it build up some steam and set for about 20 minutes or so. So in the meantime, this is when I clean up. So I will rinse out and clean all these bottles. I'll keep these out because I'm using them. I'll keep out my colors just to compare for when it dries because I'm, I don't know, why not? Um, and since I only have one more side of yarn to speckle tonight, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of water. When I do this in the oven, I don't necessarily add water because the yarn is wet, but putting it right on the burner makes me nervous, honestly. And it's one of a kind, so it really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna throw some water in here and put it on the electric burner. I have a um, electric gourmet single burner. You could see right there for smaller pans and pots and things like that. So I will throw this on, clean out those bottles, and then rinse some of the yarn I have down here that's cooling off, which is another fun colorway. Today has been a day of new colorways, and it has been so much fun to get back into the studio like this. Uh, I'll be back in a minute to 
flip the yarn over, speckle the other side, and we can take a look at it then. Okay, I'm back. I forgot to add the rest speckle, so I came in and added those shortly after. I chatted with y'all. It's been about 20 minutes. This is ready to flip. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I just took the cover off and put it over that you see what this looks like. Michael! Yeah. And we have a visitor. Uh It is now the next day. The yarn has dried, it has been wound, and I'm about to take pictures, and I wanted to show y'all the end result in a little bit of a set out, setup that I'm trying out in my new place. One of my end tables is natural wood. It has a cute little plant and a candle. Um, the lighting is usually great, but it is dark out already. Um, I was in the office today at work, so I didn't get a chance to get great lighting, but the setup I have here, the lighting, is actually okay for pictures and comes out pretty true to life to capture color. So I wanted to flip this around and show you what we're working with. So this is the table I was talking about. This is what it looks like. But I realized that if I do this sort of situation, I love this shot. And if you look at the colors here, you can definitely see all of the layers that like icy green undertone blue, this really deep steel blue denim -y color, the deep golds, the lighter shades of honey that I think blend really beautifully, and all of the various green speckles. You have these that are a little bit more mossy, some that are a little bit more of a true green, some of those rust speckles. And I'm just obsessed with this. So I'm going to go ahead and take some photos of this. I'm going to maybe make a reel. And tonight I'll be doing some editing and you will see this up hopefully tomorrow. And then this will be up in the shop. Geyser number two. Wow. I'm thinking this might need to be a sweater, to be honest. The blues and the yellows just feel so wearable. And that'll be up in the shop by the time you see this. So thank you for joining along on this episode of the Die With Me series. And if you have any questions about what I've done, uh, definitely drop them down below and I will make sure to get in touch with you. Check out my other videos if you haven't already, and that will hopefully fill in on some of the pieces I didn't go as in-depth on this week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.